morning and welcome to Moving Well. This morning we're going to be doing a chair lesson and it's to increase our ease in turning and turning around ourselves. That's something that we have to do quite frequently. How many things can you think of where you are situations where you've needed to turn and it's been difficult or you've not been able to see quite as far as you wanted to? Like? <laughs> Backing up the golf cart, yeah. Backing up the car. Or any time looking around, looking behind yourself. So today's lesson, I really need to refer you to the skeleton again. Remember that in, this, in these movement lessons, we think of our skeleton because if you think of your skeleton moving, it's more like physics kicks in and the muscles that you feel that are tight, etc or painful uh, are less likely to object if you're thinking of your skeleton and if you're moving really slowly there are the nine essentials which what's different than an exercise class in the in this work is that we're moving in a way that gets our brain's attention and when we do that our brain is able to send new messages and help to reorganize us so that we're more comfortable, more flexible, uh, have more options. And, uh, and it's totally different than when we do an, exor an exercise class because if we're moving fast or doing our habitual, moving fast, we can only do our habitual. So it bypasses the brain and the brain doesn't have a chance to give us something new. So that's the main thing to remember is that you do the, the movement small, you do the movement slowly, and take time to imagine. That's, what, that's the most slowed down that you can do a movement. But when we take time to imagine it, our brain actually begins to, begins to do some new wiring. And so, and I mean, that isn't really a new thought because a long, quite, a, I, quite a lot of years ago, they started having athletes practice, like practice or practice in their mind, imagining shooting baskets or imagining their plays in their football. So we've known that, but <clears throat> we, may, we most likely have not taken it to the levels that we want to. And in this, in this movement class, it, you're free to stop and imagine the move before you even begin if you want to. And especially if a move feels difficult, stop and just imagine it a few times before you actually begin to move. Or if there's any pain or discomfort. When we have pain or discomfort, again, our brain is busy attending to that and is not available for the new learning. So I just want to re-remind you of your skeleton. Again, thinking of I want, because if we have a mental image, we can imagine more. Can you see Dolores all right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I want to point out and remind you is that your spine goes all the way from the base of your skull to C7 at, at the end of your neck, and then all the way down to your low back, through your sacrum, and through your tailbone. That's the, the full length of your spine. So when you're imagining, if you think of all of those parts being involved, you're going to have more flexibility and more comfort. And I will remind you um, of moving parts as we go along. So let's see, is there anything else I want to say? Oh, and the rib cage. The rib cage is also designed to be pliable and flexible. It's connected with cartilage to the sternum in the front and to the spine behind. And cartilage is like our nose, if you think of it being flexible. So let's see, is there anything else? I will remind you of more as we go along. So when we're doing the lesson, you'll want to slide forward so that your sit bones are securely on the chair, but you're far enough forward so that you have freedom to move in a movement like this. So we start out, uh, you can take your glasses off now.
You'll want it. Oh, you have your slippers on. I thought you had shoes on for a moment. <laughs> All right, everybody has their feet about hip width apart. Your knees are about hip width apart. And just start by closing your eyes and tuning into what, what you feel right now. Pay attention to how your feet are on the floor. Does the pressure feel equal under your right foot and your left foot? Or is there a difference between the right and the left? And then follow from your heel through your lower leg to your knee. And then from your knees to your, through your thigh to your hip joints. And just to feel that a little bit more. Play with taking your right knee forward and your left knee back just a little bit, and then reverse it. So then the right knee goes back and the left knee goes forward. And just the more we slow down, the more we'll sense and feel. See if you can feel the movement in your hip joint. And as you continue doing it very gently and slowly, shift your attention to your sacrum that your hip bones are attached to in the back and see if you sense any movement there. You can imagine your tailbone at the base of your sacrum. And then as you scan through your sacrum to the top of your sacrum, where your vertebra begin. First you have, and remember each vertebra is designed to rotate just a little bit. And if each vertebra rotated its little bit, we would end up being able to see right behind ourselves. And for most of us in the room right now, it probably is not an option. But we'll see what happens at the end. <laughs> okay, so now you can just let your knees rest, your hips rest, and just sit and feel the weight on the right side of your pelvis and the left side of your pelvis. Notice you feel like you're sitting evenly or are you a little lopsided this morning. And then begin with your lumbar vertebra, those five at the low back area. And that continues on up to your, thora your thoracic vertebra. There are 12 of those. And that's where they begin to attach to your ribs. And continue up through your mid-back, up between your shoulder blades, to the base of your neck. And put your hand up to the base of your neck and feel the vertebra there. There's a, right at the base of your neck, there's one vertebra that's larger than the rest. It sticks out a little bit. And that's C7, it's a good landmark to use when I'm talking about things I want you to be aware of. So just, and that's also a place that gets stuck a lot and can cause a lot of neck issues. <clears throat> so you can just let that be. And then continue scanning from C7 all the way up to the base of your skull. There are seven cervical vertebra. And then your head perches, your skull perches on the spine. <clears throat> and just very gently now, turn your head just a little bit left and a little bit right to explore what is the comfortable range of turning my head right now. I like to get a, a sense of where we're starting so that we can compare at the end. And then just open your eyes and turn to look to the left and to where you go comfortably with no effort, where you go comfortably, and mark a spot on the wall visually. <laughs> Don't want anyone writing on the walls. Just mark where do you, does your head turn comfortably now? And then turn your head to the right and mark a spot there. 
and see where it goes comfortably now. Okay, now place your uh, left hand on your left knee and your right hand on the chair behind you. So you'll have to come forward enough so there's room for your hand and so that your knees, move, your legs move freely. And now, before we start, let's um, do something a little different. We haven't done this before, but let's extend an invitation to our parts. <laughs> I'm going to let you bring your hand back forward. I, this just popped into my head. I think it's a good idea. Okay, what, when we, what we know is that when our parts are cooperating and working together, we are much more flexible, we're more comfortable, and we can do so much more. So we're going to start by, again, just turn and look where you looked left and then look where you looked right again. See? And now, we talked about how the sacrum turns and the vertebra turn. Begin to just take your right knee forward a little bit and bring it back a little bit. Can you feel your sacrum moving? I just want to make sure everybody knows where their sacrum is. Okay. And now, you can let that go. And now, as you're turning, think, can you think of your shoulder blades? And imagine your shoulder blades turning. And then can you shift your attention to your ribs? And imagine your ribs turning. And then let that go. And now, again, think of your shoulder blades. And think of one shoulder blade moving forward and one shoulder blade moving back. And then let that go. Still focus on your shoulder blades. And think of your shoulder blades sliding down on your back. And then think of your shoulder blades coming back to neutral and sliding up a little. And then let that go. And now bring your right hand back on the chair to lean on the chair. And you might find a position that you're in that you're on the edge of the chair, and you can actually lean on that hand behind you. And your left hand is on your knee. And so now, take a moment to imagine this. Imagine that you're going to turn to look around yourself. And after you've imagined it, then begin to turn as if to look around yourself. Just turn and then come back. You turn slowly and repeat it. Repeat it several times. Now, as you think of turning to look at something, what part of your skeleton do you feel moving the most? Do you feel any strain in your neck? Now 
Okay, now just bring your arm back to rest for a moment. And like I said, it isn't that you're working hard, but we take the frequent rests because that gives your brain a chance to notice anything that's changed. So. <clears throat> So again, come back to leaning on your right hand behind you. Your left hand is on your left knee. And now think of, you're going to be turning to the right. So think of sliding your left knee forward and your right knee back. And repeat that several times. And you, you do a move. You do the move. Come back to neutral. Pause. Take a breath. That gives your brain an opportunity to reset and be ready for the next move. <clears throat> Can you feel turning down by your tailbone? Now, think of, begin to think of your spine, your low back spine, that area between your, where your ribs start and your pelvis is. As you take your left knee forward and your right knee back, think of that part of your spine turning. So turn as if you want to see something behind you. If we have an intention, that also gives our brain information. <clears throat> and feel free to stop and rest anytime you feel the need to, if I haven't said stop and rest yet. And then just come back to neutral for a moment. And then assume the same position, left hand on your left knee, right hand leaning behind you. And begin to think of your entire spine rotating. As you turn yourself to look to the right. You turn and then you come back. You turn and go as far as is comfortable, pause, and then come back. Resist the urge to turn and then to try to turn further. Because when we go to where there's that initial stop, then it gives our brain some information. We come back and then we take a breath and then we turn again and you may find that it's changing. And then come back to neutral, pause, take a breath, bring your arm back. Is there any discomfort with that, Dolores? It's a little stiff, but it's okay. And again, take your right hand behind you, your left hand on your knee, and now continue to Think of your whole spine, including your neck and head, rotating and turning to look behind yourself. You go and then you come back. And now this time, lead the movement with your eyes. Let your eyes look to the right as you turn to the right.
And notice, does it make a difference? Now, let your eyes look the opposite direction as you turn to the right. Look, let your eyes look to the left as you turn to the right. It's giving your brain information. <laughs> and come back. Okay, so come back. Everybody come back and rest. So the idea of the Feldenkrais neural movement lessons is that we begin to reorganize ourselves. We give our brain contrast. So when we you know look in the opposite direction, it you know gives our brain information that yeah, we want to turn our eyes to the right if we're turning to the right. Did you notice a difference? It's amazing what an impact the position of our eyes have. My body went into some kind of, you know, <laughs> oh, kind yeah. of feeling. Yeah. Just, you know, yeah. That's wrong. You know, it's yeah. Just... yeah. But it's, it's very important information for your brain. So now, again, assume the same position, left hand on left knee, right hand leaning behind you. Mm -hmm. My left leg's going to sleep, so what's that mean? <laughs> you, need, you, you need to shift, it's probably in the way that you're sitting, or can be what's going on in your Rock, low back, back here. Forth. Yeah. Rock back and forth. If you need to get up and walk around your chair a little bit. I'm well, you don't want your knee, you don't want your leg to be numb. Uh, okay. We're not quite there yet. All right, so now you're going to be doing the same, same turning, but this time you're going to keep your eyes straight forward, but let your head turn. And you're going to turn, <laughs> you're doing the turn, you're taking your left knee forward, your right knee back. And now come back to neutral, pause. Take a moment to scan for anything that's different, any difference in how you're sitting on your sit bones, any feeling that you feel in your sternum. And now this time, let your uh, head and eyes go in the same direction that you're turning. You're turning to the right. Take a moment to imagine the movement. Imagine starting from your sit bones, your pelvis. Imagine the rotation beginning there. Imagine how your low back begins to rotate. And then how your ribs can begin to move and your sternum can begin to move, and your shoulder blades. And then as you repeat the turns, shift your attention to different parts of yourself where you initiate it, where you initiate the move. And you can actually use your left hand to help take your left knee forward as your right knee goes back. And each time you do the turn, you know, choose a different part to initiate the turn with. The options are you could think of your knees moving and feel how that pulls your hip joints, rotates your pelvis, which begins to rotate your spine.
and notice it. When you imagine different segments of your spine rotating, does it have an impact on how you turn? And stop and rest anytime you feel the need to. Notice your belly. What are you doing with your belly? Everybody stop and pause. The American way has been to suck it in and tuck it under. Suck the belly in, tuck, <laughs> tuck the tush under. And that has caused a lot of issues, a lot of back issues, a lot of movement issues. So now <clears throat> we're going to do the same movement. Your right hand's going back on the chair. Your left hand's on your left knee. Take a moment to imagine this first. You're going to suck your belly in tight and do the move. So you hold your belly in tight and feel what that does to the availability of your spine turning. <laughs> and just do it and then come back. And now the next time you turn, you're going to do the same turn. You're going to be taking your left knee forward and your right hip back, your right knee back. But push your belly out in the direction that you're turning. So think of pushing your belly out towards your right thigh. Mm -hmm. the, and do that, just do that a few times and then be aware of how much of your spine do you feel rotating. And then come back and pause. Bring your arm back. <laughs> okay, now the next thing we're going to do, the, another habit that a lot of people have, a lot of us have had maybe, is to clench our teeth. Grinding your teeth, teeth clenching. Um, so now we're going to do the same move. Your right hand's back on the chair, left hand's on your left knee. And this time you're going to go ahead and do the full turn, but clench your teeth before you start. and just keep them clenched and see if that has an impact. Anybody notice a difference? Pardon? Right. <laughs> right. But the other thing that goes on when you clench, okay, just bring your arms back for a moment and just sit and then just be aware of your back and your pelvis and clench your teeth. Do you notice anything? Do you feel the connection? I feel a stronger connection, actually. A stronger connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, and that's, that's the whole point, is that okay. when we clench, our, our jaw and our pelvis mirror each other. Yeah, that's what I'm feeling. And so when we clench our teeth, it actually inhibits the free movement of the pelvis. Yeah, we're all connected. You got that right. Yeah. <laughs> I can't hit a golf ball nearly as hard if my teeth are clenched. No, absolutely, because that would totally stop your rotation. All right, one more time. Lean on the right hand behind you, left hand on your knee. And now begin to, again, keep your eyes straight forward as you rotate. But before, before you start, think about all your parts that rotate. Your pelvis rotates, your shoulders rotate. And play with initiating the turn 
from different parts of yourself. One time think of your shoulders leading the move. One time think of your pelvis leading the move. The more we get connected through our whole skeleton, the easier functions are, the more our muscles can let go and cooperate and function the way they're designed to. And be sure you're Now just pause. <clears throat> For a moment, notice what you notice. And now we're going to contrast two different um, initiation points. First of all, think of, imagine, take time to imagine taking your left knee forward, your right knee back, feeling your pelvis rotate, feeling your sacrum rotate, feeling your vertebra begin to turn, moving up as you turn to look. So that's thinking of initiating the turn from the bottom up. and then come back. And now imagine the, initiating the turn from the top down. And then go back to doing it the other way initiating from your pelvis, shifting the knees, rotating the sacrum, rotating the pelvis, the vertebra, rotating. Can you feel how your ribs turn, how your shoulder blades slide? The more parts you can bring in participating in the move, it's like just having more players on your team. Okay, then let that go. Just stop and rest for a moment. You can sit back on your chair and just bring your attention in so that you can feel anything you notice that's different. What about your breathing? And then come back, sit to the edge of your chair so your sit bones are secure there, but your thighs are free to move. And now put your right hand on your right knee, your left hand behind you, and start by imagining, imagining your parts. You can imagine starting from your tailbone and your sacrum rotating all the way up. And then just for contrast, you can imagine initiating it with your head turning. And be aware of what you're doing with your belly. You can also try that both ways. Physically, we're doing it mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm.
remember, if each little vertebra turns just a little bit, everything works better. And now come back to the center. Pause for a moment. And now go back to the same position you were just in. <clears throat> and now this time, when you, when you go to turn, pull your belly in and make the turn. You can choose where you want to initiate. I just want you to feel the contrast of what happens if you pull the belly in. Is there a part of your spine that is no longer readily available? Yeah, right. Exactly. And then free your belly. And and continue doing the same move with putting your attention on your shoulder blades and feel what you do with your shoulder blades in order to turn. If you think of your shoulder blades beginning to, to move, to invite your pelvis to turn. Be sure you're Right knee is moving forward. Your left knee is moving back. And then just stop and rest for a moment. And now... Uh, assume the same position. You're going to be turning to the right. This time, keep your head and eyes straight ahead. And don't let your head turn at all. Your head's going to stay put. Your nose is going to point, st point straight forward and begin to make your turn. Your head is going with you. <laughs> yeah, you want to keep... Oh, I thought you were... Okay. Yeah. So you want this same like this... Yeah. <laughs> See how it, yeah. now you got your parts all moving together. They don't. <laughs> yeah. You want me to practice? Yeah. Right. Yeah. This is. This gives your brain information. That, uh, so you can actually think think of looking to the right as you're turning to the left. But stay within the, you always stay within the range of ease and comfort, yeah. And just do that a couple times to feel it, and then let your head and eyes go with the turning. And everybody come back to neutral, stop and rest. Anything you notice that's different in your sitting, in the way your shoulders are hanging, your shoulder blades. Notice, does it actually feel like your shoulder blades are hanging on your back? Often they become like they're glued to our back. And just taking time to free your shoulder blades and make a huge difference in your neck. Anytime, that's just a little piece you can use anytime you notice your neck is tightening up. Okay, now I'll come back again. Your, right, your hand is on your right knee. You're leaning on your left hand behind you. Then now um, take time to imagine beginning to 
Press on your right foot, slide your right knee forward so that your hip joints begin to move, your pelvis begins to rotate, and then your lumbar spine begin to rotate. And, and notice, if you're going slow yet, periodically you may notice this, a spontaneous deeper breath. That's a response in your nervous system. And then just continue on thinking about each vertebra rotating, working its way up, up to the ones between your shoulder blades. You imagine your shoulder blades rotating, your right one moving forward, your left one moving back. And your vertebra and your neck turning, letting your eyes look, lead the move. And then leave it alone, come back to neutral and rest. And then just a few times, let yourself turn and look from side to side, let, letting your whole spine turn. So you, your knees are going to alternately move forward and backwards. So as you're Moving your knees forward and backwards, your hip joints move forward and backwards. Can you feel your pelvis turning, your spine turning? Now are your shoulder blades sliding on your spine or not? <laughs> okay, now pause and just begin to look down as though there's something on the floor that you're interested in. And notice how much of your spine knows that you want to see what's on the floor. How much of your spine is participating in rounding. Now this is a place where in order to round, our belly has to soften and come in. And when we round, when we want to come erect, then we push our belly out and get tall. But now as you're thinking of your spine, remember each vertebra turns just a little bit. And if we think of each one rotating and our pelvis rolls back, you feel yourself kind of roll back on your sit bones. You're pulling your belly in and then you're pushing your belly out, allowing your, begin to push your belly out, which will begin to roll your pelvis forward and straighten your spine. And do that again. You're going to let your pelvis roll backwards. Your whole spine's going to round and soften. You're going to look towards the floor. Let your head hang. And you feel your sternum moving back. Think of your sternum moving back, pressing your spine back up between your shoulder blades. And then let that go. Just come back again. <coughs> Slide yourself forward on your chair and lean both hands behind you on your chair. They don't have to be way back. They can be just behind your tush there. And begin to, in this position, let your shoulders go back and push, roll your belly forward, push your belly out, and let yourself get tall for starters. So now your spine is arching in the opposite direction of what we've been doing. Think of your sternum sliding forward. And then allow yourself to slowly reverse it. And just repeat this slowly a few times. You push the belly out. And you can play with, when you're thinking of pushing your belly forward, you can think of pushing your belly down more towards your pubic bone. And rolling forward. 
as you roll the, and then let the rest of your belly come out. Let your sternum, your shoulder blades slide together in the back. Your sternum comes up. And just, just roll into the move and then roll out of it. Resist the temptation to stay there and keep pushing harder and harder. You can get there and then think of your the spine, your spine between your shoulder blades moving forward and your shoulder blades sliding together. <clears throat> and then when you round down, you can let your arms come around if you want to when you round down. Think of your shoulder blades sliding apart. And now as you arch your back, let yourself look up towards the ceiling, but resist the urge to crank your neck. Let your whole spine round, or arch, I mean, let your whole spine arch, but don't let your neck go further than this. Think of pushing this out. This, you can let your head go here, but don't go here. You feel this crank here? So think of this moving forward instead. As you can still look up, but don't go so far back that it, you can look up as you're getting taller. But once once it does th once it does this, <laughs> you're gone too far. <laughs> Do you, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And be sure you're pushing your belly out. This is one place where the suck it in and tuck it under really causes issues with your neck because you don't have the availability. When you're sucking your belly in, then you're going to automatically crank your neck. Okay, now this time, as you let yourself round, let your eyes and your head look up. So you, you come into the move, and then you come out and repeat the move. And when you come forward, push your belly out, get tall. And then pause a moment. And now the next time, you're going to let your head round along with the rest of your spine. Just your eyes are going to look up. Your eyes will look up, but your head rounds. Your, your sternum sinks. You push that belly out to get tall. And then come back to neutral. Lean on your hands behind you. And just let yourself get tall. And then round with your hands resting behind you. Let your whole self slouch. And then push your belly out. Roll your pelvis forward, get tall, and can you feel your shoulder blades moving together, your sternum moving, all these places that get rigid and cause us issues. And just repeat the rounding and the extending a few times. And make sure you're breathing. When do you inhale and when do you exhale? When do you no inhale? When do you hold your breath? And then let it go. Just 
just come back to neutral and close your eyes and just check in with yourself to notice what's different. Is there any difference in how you're sitting, how the one sit bone sits on the chair and the other? Do you feel more balanced? Do you feel taller? Sometimes people will feel shorter, but usually people feel taller. But sometimes we just end up feeling more connected and compact. So just notice what is for you. Can you feel your shoulder blades literally hanging on your back now? So you're not holding your shoulders up. And in a moment, I'll have you stand up. And for a moment, a few moments, just stand, let your arms hang, and just tune in and feel what's different in standing. So when you're ready, go ahead and stand up. And you can come off the mat onto your floor, onto the floor. So. Feel the way your feet are connected to the floor now. Feel how your arms are hanging. Feel how your shoulders are hanging. And just imagine your skeleton from your feet through your legs to your hip joints. Feel your pelvis, your sacrum, your tailbone, and then scan from your low back up your spine, up between your shoulder blades, to the base of your neck, and right on up to the base of your skull. Feel the way your shoulder blades are hanging behind you, the way your arms are hanging. Notice your breathing. Where do you feel your breath go now when you inhale, you exhale? And standing, just gently look a little to the left and a little to the right and just feel, let yourself turn, what's turning like. When you think of looking to the left, you, does your right shoulder move forward? Your left shoulder move back. When you look to the right, does your left shoulder move forward, your right shoulder move back? Can you feel your whole skeleton? Can you feel movement in your rib cage, your sternum? Me too, and that's very nice. It's connected with you. And again, just take a moment to notice how deep your breath goes now. We know our lungs don't go that low, but we, that makes us aware of how much holding we can be doing without even realizing it. There's a response through our whole self when we inhale and exhale, unless there's chronic habitual holding in of your muscles. So, All right, go ahead and walk around. Take the changes into movement. Just, again, keeping your attention in to notice anything that you notice. What? It's your attention. When I was on the plane flights. <clears throat> That's it for today. Thank you for joining us, and keep on moving well. And remember, we're at the Addison Township Center every Tuesday morning at 9.30. If you'd like to join us in person, you are more than welcome.
Hi, my name is W. Ripto. I'm a member of the Addison Township Fire Department. I'm a lieutenant here. I've been here for 13 years. Today, we're going to talk about uh, address signs and having your drive array properly marked and making sure that when there's an emergency, we're going to get there quickly and safely to help you with your emergency. Here are some things that we need to keep in mind when you mark your driveway and or your mailbox. Uh, in some situations, you may have to mark both, uh, your mailbox and your driveway. Uh, in situations where your driveway uh, is across the street from your mailbox, or if you have a shared driveway where multiple um, houses are on your driveway, you know, or if your driveway splits off into two or three areas, uh, wherever it splits, you might want to have an address sign marking what side to go on, whether it's left or right or straight or however you need to do it. Um, it's going to make our job a lot easier to get to you in that state of emergency. A few other things to, to keep in mind is uh, you can have your address sign vertically or you can have it displayed horizontally. We highly suggest that you mark both sides of your address so that uh, whenever we're coming from the north or the south or the east or the west, we can see that driveway uh, on both sides. In our engines, uh, in our ambulances, we have our map books. And in our map books, we have uh, very detailed oriented uh, pictures showing exactly where the addresses are. Um, but having that marked uh, your address sign marked or your driveway marked will definitely ease us in, in finding your address in that state of emergency. Okay. Uh, in the map book we have all of our hydrants marked, we have all of our streets marked, and it makes it a lot easier for us to find. So the, uh, that's typically the officer's job, sitting in the officer's seat. He grabs the map book and uh, uh, verifies with the driver. Uh, exactly where we're going. And we have also a blown up section um, showing uh, uh, real quick and easy how to find uh, the, your address uh, on one sheet of paper instead of flipping through the book we can go through your section and find exactly where we need to go. Okay, The address signs are $15 a piece. Uh, you can call the station at 248 628-5600 and uh, request uh, to have one filled out uh, or you can come to the station and have one filled out yourself. They're uh, $15 a piece again and uh, it, it's definitely a good thing to have in, for your driveway and for us uh, if we ever need to get there. Um, thank you very much for your time today. Again, my name is W. Ripto with the Addison Township Fire Department. Thank you and have a good day. Just think, what if we didn't have local TV and radio? Where would I go for local sports, local politics, a mayor, city council, stuff that affects me every day? How about health? Who's covering things that endanger my family? I need to know now, as it happens, from sources I trust, people in my community. No agenda, no bias like you find on cable and social media, just facts. For news I can trust, I stay local. Support your local station. Text TV to 52886 today.